Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. This week we're talking about the Smash Broadway musical Hamilton, so I thought I'd get some help from the biggest Hamilton fan I know, Alex from Technicality. Hi. It's hard to compress a two and a half hour musical down into a five, ten minute video, so we're going to focus on one question. How does Hamilton hold itself together? Why does it sound like one complete piece of art instead of 46 unrelated songs? Well, it all comes down to themes and motifs. Take it away, Alex. Themes and motifs are basically just repeated ideas. They're little pieces of music that pop up again and again to help tie everything together, and Hamilton is full of them. Probably the most obvious ones are the lyrical motifs. Lines like I'm not throwing away my shot or why do you write like you're running out of time get reused and recycled over and over throughout the musical. There's also plenty of motifs in the music itself though. For instance, this sound tells you that Burr is about to do some narrating while this one which I like to call the Sad Eliza theme, happens whenever Eliza Hamilton loses someone she cares about. We first hear it at the end of That Would Be Enough, where she's trying but failing to convince Alexander not to return to war and instead stay with her to help raise their child. Then it comes back as a major theme in Quiet Uptown, where she mourns that child's death. And finally, we hear a simplified version of it as the background to Best of Wives and Best of Women, where she tries to stop Alexander from going off to his own demise. Using the same piece of music in all three pieces helps tell the story of Eliza's struggles and draws parallels between the three events that may not have been and obvious otherwise. In a story like Hamilton, that ability to subtly connect different events is crucial. It's such a complex narrative with so many moving parts that in order for the audience to follow along, you need to give them larger arcs they can follow, and using motifs lets you do that without being too heavy-handed. You don't have to stop the action and say, okay, so this is basically just like that thing that happened before, because reusing the music does that for you. Of course, repetition can get boring, so in order to avoid that, a good composer has to develop their themes. And probably the best example from Hamilton is the line, look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. We first hear it in the Schuyler Sisters, where Eliza is celebrating living in such a vibrant time. And that would be enough, she uses it instead to remind Hamilton that, after spending so much time at war, he's lucky to be alive. Then, in non-stop, he flips it on her, using it to defend his decision to go serve his country. In Act 2, it comes up again in Take a Break, where she's again using it to encourage him to take some time to relax. And finally, Alex sings the first part in It's Quiet Uptown, where he's pleading for Eliza to take him back, but with everything they've been through, he can't really call them lucky anymore. That one little phrase traces the entire arc of their relationship, and how it's used tells us what they're going through. Speaking of development, one of my favorite themes in the whole musical is Phillips. because of what it tells us about him. It's most clearly tied to him in Blow Us All Away, where it's the main hook, but that's not the first time we see it. It also appears in Take a Break, where his mother is teaching him piano and also French, and that connection shows how close the two of them are. Philip's entire musical identity is tied to memories of his mother, and those memories are the last thing he talks about with her before he dies. But that's not the first time either. The first time we hear this theme, or at least the beginning of it, has nothing at all to do with Philip. It's the introduction to Ten Dual Commandments. You know, the song about dueling. If you're watching for it, the music tells you exactly how Philip is going to die more than half an hour before he actually does. There's also a lot of deeper connections, things that are much harder to notice at first glance. For instance, in Wait For It, Burr responds to Hamilton challenging his way of life, and while he's doing that, the piano plays a couple different things, including this. Then if we fast forward all the way to Burn, where Eliza is responding to Hamilton destroying her way of life, we hear this. It's a different tempo, a different rhythm, a different key, a different range, and it's on a different instrument with different effects, but it's almost the exact same melodic structure. There's a couple notes different, but since these songs are so far apart in the musical, that's hardly noticeable. The fact that they're so similar shows that Hamilton's tendency to hurt the people he loves never really changes, and that the same behaviors that led him to betray Eliza have been with him for a long time. These subtler themes help give the show depth, reward the audience for paying attention, and encourage them to re-listen to catch other things they might have missed. Many of the motifs come from pretty early on in the musical. For instance, just in the song My Shot, they introduce hugely important themes like I'm not throwing away my shot, rise up, and I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory that really help define the identity of the musical. But they don't stop there. New motifs keep popping up throughout the entire musical. In fact, as far as either of us can tell, the last song to introduce a new motif that's then referenced in a later song is It's Quiet Uptown, three quarters of the way through the second act, whose title line is repeated, by the way, in the election of 1800. Adding new motifs keeps things from getting repetitive and stale, and they're interwoven with the older motifs to help tie everything together 
together into one complete bundle. But in all this talk of Hamilton's themes and motifs, there's one glaring counterexample, one bit that doesn't seem connected to anything else at all. King George. He pops up three different times throughout the musical, singing the same basic song each time, and that song is completely isolated from the rest of the show. It almost sounds like it's from a different musical entirely. It has its own lyrical motifs, like oceans rise, empires fall, and of course the music is always the same exact thing, but it never borrows any themes from the rest of the musical, nor are any of its themes appropriated anywhere else. And they could be, there's lots of great ways you could compare and contrast King George with the Americans. Imagine Washington declaring in non-stop that oceans fall, empires rise. But they don't do that. Not ever. In fact, the music of King George's songs is very tonally different, too. It's less based on modern hip-hop and more akin to the work of the Beatles and other bands from the British Invasion, which is itself a clever reference. The approach to rhyme is also much simpler, with mostly just end rhymes instead of the more involved internal rhymes common to the rest of the musical. In a very literal way, King George is speaking a different language than his rebellious subjects, and the musical disconnect between his parts and those of the Americans mirrors the cognitive disconnect that exists between them. Here, the last of motifs helps tell the story. There's a lot of other examples that we didn't have time for, because again, it's a two and a half hour musical, but that's the basics of how Hamilton uses themes and motifs to help tell its story. If you want more musical analysis, I talked to Alex over on his channel about the Kendrick Lamar song Humble, and there's a link to that video in the description, which I highly recommend you check out. And hey, thanks for watching. If you want to help make these videos possible, please consider supporting 12 on Patreon or checking out our store. You can also join our mailing list to find out about new episodes, like, share, comment, subscribe, and keep on rocking.